Okay, now that all the parts have been mounted on the PC board and I've double checked everything, um, there was a couple pieces that were, a couple parts that were left over when I was done. I ended up with an extra 100 ohm, an extra 220K, and an extra one in, but it shows that it's supposed to be three, and there it was four that were supplied in the kit. Um, I've gone through and double checked everything, and I, I'm only finding three 100 ohm resistors and one 220 on all the installation pictures. So I don't know why there's two of them there, but I've gone through and I've checked and checked and checked and I can only see one showing up to be installed. So next we're going to connect it to the, uh, the cabinet, which is partly built. This part was already pre-done. It just wires soldered right onto the IC itself, but I'm sure it does the job. So we're going to have to uh, attach It's showing me the front and the back. Okay, well, I can see that. And here's where it wants me to connect all of these colored wires here to the header. So I'll just bring the the board in place here and I need to attach and they're all in order so starting at one end of the header here and working my way back I'm going to attach all of these wires in the order that they are currently in which is black white slate violet blue green yellow orange red and brown so they're already in the correct order so we start down at this header here and start working our way back so I'm just going to pin the header pins to make soldering the wires a little bit easier Okay, that's got the first header installed, first multi-connector. I'm going to mount the board into the cabinet now. And I can now follow the, the directions. I can mount the long lead. goes right back here to this one. On the picture it shows a green lead but the only long lead is a red one and it's going to the right place on the uh, panel. So put the red lead there, the long lead. Okay we've got our left and right inputs here which we've got resistors on them and they go to these two pins here right by the capacitors so we'll just solder them in place okay that's kind of my audio input I gotta hook this variable capacitor up now and it's gonna connect up to couple pins at the back here. There's a green and a yellow wires. The green connects to the connector along the edge of the board here to these pins here and the yellow to that pin. So we'll connect the green one here first. Okay, that's the variable capacitor is now connected. And there should be a purple lead here that goes down. And this one goes down to this resistor that's standing up here.
and now we connect the the wires that go to the back of the case these are the antenna wires here yellow and black they're going to connect also to the same uh, connectors here the same pins as the capacitor or the um, yeah the variable capacitor so we'll tin these wires and put them on there as well Going to move the variable capacitor to the other side of the header just because they're the two of them are connected together, right? Just makes it a little easier to get in there with the antenna wires as well. There we go. Okay, now I can connect the antenna wires. Positive wire from the, the power switch goes to this connector in the middle here. So that's this wire here. And there's a ground wire that's going to go over to this terminal over here. That's the last wire. And then we can test this thing and see if it sends out a signal. I believe that's the last of the wires. This is check all wiring. Let's take a look. Oops. Well, one of the, one of the audio wires fell off. One of these resistors did not stick down. Tack that down again. How's that pin? Purple wire to here. Yo yo red. black and green ground yep I believe that has all of the wiring done okay we have our audio source set up here I'm just gonna set uh, input to the right channel only and I'm gonna try and tune this thing I've set it to 1580 kilohertz because that's a, a blank frequency so I got some music playing some royalty free music here and you know what left channel is pretty low, there's the right channel, let's see if we can tune this for better separation, listen to the left channel alone, we want to tune this for minimum, Critical, very critical adjustments. No 
right channel. And I'm gonna plug both of them in. So I know you guys want to hear what this really sounds like. It actually sounds very good. I can't play that, obviously. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my other AM stereo radio and uh, we'll make a recording directly from my AM stereo Walkman so you guys can hear exactly how good this thing actually sounds. This car radio is buzzing quite a bit because it does, I'm just using a car radio for testing, I'm just using this thing, the old A37. Uh, I'm gonna get my Walkman, my my uh, AM Stereo Walkman, and take a listen to it on that, and we'll pipe that sound into the video so you guys can actually hear how good AM Stereo was capable of sounding when there was broadcasting in AM Stereo, because this actually sounds pretty bloody good.
Well, that's it. That's the AM stereo transmitter that uh, I built. I got it off of an eBay kit. And, uh, yeah, it was an enjoyable project to build. And, um, yeah, it's, it's performing very well. I plan to probably replace that antenna output with a coaxial output so that I can build myself some type of little amplifier to get a little bit more than the 400 milliwatts. Just so I can get a little bit more range, right? With less interference. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again soon.